if you have had terrible things happen to you in the past, then your body computes the present danger of the environment based on how many things have happened to you that are terrible in the past that, that aren't resolved. And resolved would mean that you had generated a solution for them. If your psychophysiological system assumes that all the danger that you were subject to once is still present in the environment, then it's gonna set you on edge as if you're walking in dangerous territory. And the psychophysiological consequence of that is that you're prepared for danger and that does such things as burn up excess resources because you're much more reactive and on point than you might otherwise be in an anxiety prone manner. It also suppresses immunological function because your body isn't that worried about long term immunological health if you're confronting an emergency. The thing about memory is that it's not there to provide an accurate, objective record of the past, which is in fact impossible because the past is so unbelievably complex. It's more like a navigation tool, which is I went here, I fell into something terrible, and now I need to recalibrate the navigation map that I'm using so that I don't fall into the same hole. And you know, one of the things that people might want to know who are listening is that if you have a memory that's older than about 18 months and it haunts you, and when it comes up involuntarily, it produces a stress reaction. What that means is that as far as your nervous system is concerned, and so as far as your body's concerned, that danger hasn't gone away. And what's happening is an unconscious alarm system that's looking for pitfalls and holes is warning you that the map that you're using is incomplete in a manner that might enable you to fall into the same hole. And so one of the things that people can do that's very useful is if you have memories like that that plague you, is to bring them to mind voluntarily instead of waiting for them to come after you involuntarily and then to think through what has changed and what might not have but also to come up with a plan so that if a similar circumstance arose you'd be in a better position in one way or another to deal with it there's no other way of getting the memory to go away like merely recontemplating it in the same manner over and over won't do it and allowing it to plague you unconsciously it'll do that forever until you solve it it might show up in your dreams it'll show up in your fantasies it'll trigger you so to speak when you're talking to other people if they happen to discuss a topic that's related to it and it's because that the narrative is the event was one of failure and defeat and if there isn't a map to allow you to transcend that that's functional then the part of your brain that is concerned with identifying danger is never going to let you go if you run then the signal that the story you're acting out is that the thing you're running from is bigger than you and that you have to right. hide. And that's just a recipe for anxiety. Now, it's not necessarily that easy to turn and face something. You can differentiate the problem. Like, you may be having tremendous difficulties at work. You might be dealing with people who are tyrannical at work and find it very meaningless. And so, and that's bothering you constantly. It's disturbing your sleep, for example, and it's haunting you and you're you tend to try to push it out of your mind when the thoughts come. And partly that's because the thought of getting a new job is so daunting that you can't face it. And one of the ways of recalibrating that is to break down the problem into small and manageable steps. And so, for example, one of the things that you can do if you might have to consider getting a new job because you're unhappy and miserable at work is open up your resume or your CV and look at it, right? So you might not be able to get a new job, but you might be able to open up your resume and look at it. And then having done that, you've sort of cracked the surface and then maybe you could spend an hour a week for a month updating it or 10 minutes a day or 10 minutes every two days, something like that. But part of the trick is to take these larger monsters that are frightening enough so you want to run away from them. Decide that you're going to face the situation. If something is making you anxious and afraid and miserable, it's very useful to lay out, to write out all the reasons it's making you anxious and miserable and to ask yourself, what is it you're afraid of? And then to develop a differentiated plan for dealing with those.